Good evening TSA members and guests. My name is Emma. What is a constellation? Let me explain. There is a word for a pattern of stars in the sky which appears to be so distinctive that it is easily identifiable and remembered. That word is asterism. In ancient times, people saw asterisms and made up all kinds of stories about mythological creatures and characters which they associated with the star patterns. As astronomers subsequently began to make maps of the stars, the named asterisms were included in the maps and called constellations. As time passed, the sky became filled with constellations, many of which included the same stars. The International Astronomical Union stepped in to gain control and make sense of things in 1925. They adopted 88 official constellations and assigned areas of the sky to specific constellation names. It should be noted, however, that they made no requirement that the constellation be easily seen nor that the legends associated with the constellation make any sense. In fact, most constellations don't really resemble the creatures or characters they are named after. So don't worry if you can't make out the shapes. Constellations can be a useful way to help identify positions of stars in the sky. Constellations have imaginary boundaries formed by connecting the dots and all the stars within those boundaries are labeled with the name of that constellation. However, keep in mind that constellations are not real objects, they are just patterns as seen from our observation point on Earth. The patterns we see are for the most part just by chance. The individual stars in a constellation may appear to be very close to each other, but in fact they can be separated by huge distances in space and have no real connection to each other at all. At different times of the year, different constellations can be seen in the sky. Different constellations can also be seen depending on where you are on Earth. Now, here is Harry to talk about this month's constellation. Once again it is time for one of the most exciting parts of tonight's meeting, the TSA's Constellation of the Month. For March we have selected Cancer, the Crab. Although it is one of the constellations of the Zodiac, Cancer plays a relatively small role in both sky and sky lore. It is a small constellation of faint stars, so it is difficult to find in the sky. Cancer, which is Latin for crab, is the dimmest of the thirteen constellations of the zodiac, having only two stars above the fourth magnitude. Cancer lies between Leo, the lion, and Gemini, the twins. It is almost impossible to see Cancer as a crab with the naked eye, or even binoculars. It looks more like a faint, upside down Y. Cancer is visible in the northern hemisphere in the early spring. It can be seen in the southern hemisphere during autumn. The Cancer constellation occupies an area of 506 square degrees. In mythology, it forms part of the story of Hercules. According to one version of the tale, while Hercules was tackling the multi-headed monster Hydra, the goddess Hera, sent a giant crab to distract the strong man. Unfortunately for the big, crustacean, it wasn't much of a challenge for Hercules. He crushed it, then quickly returned to his monster killing. Hera placed the remains of the crab in the sky, but gave it only faint stars because of its failure. The constellation's most prominent feature is the star cluster M44, the Beehive Cluster. It is about 600 light years away and more than 10 light years wide. To the unaided eye it looks like a small, fuzzy, patch of light, like a tiny cloud floating through the stars. But telescopes reveal that the cloud is actually a cluster of hundreds of individual stars. The stars of the beehive are all members of a big family. They all formed at the same time, from the same cloud of gas and dust. The most recent estimates put their age at around 600 million to 700 million years old, which makes them 4 billion years younger than our sun. Astronomers deduce M44's age by determining the types of stars it contains and the types it does not. Missing from the cluster are the hottest, brightest, and most massive classes of stars. Such stars burn through their nuclear fuel in a hurry, so they disappear in tens or hundreds of millions of years, 
placing a lower limit on the cluster's age. Most of this cluster's current members are the faint cosmic embers known as red dwarfs, while about a third are somewhat like our sun. Only a handful of stars are much brighter and more massive than the sun, and these will burn out fairly soon on the astronomical time scale. M67, a much older cluster than M44, also lurks within Cancer's borders. It is similar to M44 except for its age, which is about the same as the age of our sun. Most clusters don't survive more than a few trips around the center of our galaxy because the gravity of other stars and giant clouds of gas and dust pull them apart. Yet M67 has survived for 4 or 5 billion years. That's because it resides in the outer part of the Milky Way galaxy, where there are fewer stars and gas clouds to disturb it. One other resident of note is the planetary system 55 Can Cry. It consists of five known planets, with perhaps several more awaiting discovery. That system is about 40 light years away, and is faintly visible to the unaided eye, although you need help to find it. It consists of two wide spaced stars, one of which is similar to the Sun, and which hosts the planets. The innermost of its planets is a super Earth, which means it's only a few times heavier than our world, one of the lightest weight planets yet discovered. The other planets are much bigger and heavier. None of the planets is in the star's habitable zone, which is the distance from the star at which liquid water could exist on the surface. Since water is a necessary ingredient for life as we know it, none of the planets is considered a likely abode for life. Altaf is the brightest star in Cancer at magnitude 3.5. It is an orange-hued giant star about 290 light-years from Earth. The star of Q-Benz, which means that law, is a double star with a primary of magnitude 4.3, 173 light-years from Earth. As you do your observing, see if you can find the constellation Cancer, the Crab, a faint, upside-down Y, between Leo, the Lion, and Gemini, the twins. Now I will return the meeting back to Vicky, cheerio.